I'd like to show you how to get RetroArch working in Linux. You want to go to the RetroArch homepage and click on download. If you want to do this the easy way like I did, scroll down to where it says Linux, download app image and click that. Just download this and unarchive it. There's going to be an app image in there. I downloaded this. I stuck this right in my apps folder. Uh, right there. So you're going to want to download an icon for that too and make a menu entry and point the menu entry to it. It's going to look like this when you first start it. I'm showing you this from the very first run because I want you to see how to do this. The first thing you want to do is go to online updater, update your assets. Otherwise it's just too much eye pain. Much nicer. Update your core info files. Just go through all this stuff one by one. I'm skipping the cheats for now because I really don't care about the stupid cheats. You don't really need overlays on a PC probably, but they're, they're pretty darn handy on a tablet or a phone. Shaders are always great. You want to make sure your on-demand thumbnail downloads are off. Has a severe performance impact. I don't know about severe, but it does have a little bit of a performance impact. It's pretty annoying. If you have a cheap controller, now would be the time to set it up. Or if you have an Xbox controller, whatever you got, just plug it in and set it up. You should go to the hotkeys and go down here to menu toggle controller combo. I like to use this one, left one, right one, start, select. Next go to port one controls, go to analog to digital type and go left analog. Okay, video full screen mode. I usually turn start and full screen mode to on. I don't know if that's going to persist next time I restart it. Hmm, huh, I guess it did. Just hit backspace a bunch of times anytime you want to go back or go back to the main menu. Oh, I meant to go into input. Okay, port one controls. I don't know what type of controller you have, but you want to go to set all controls. If you get to some you don't have like these, just wait four or five seconds and they go on to the next. Okay, much nicer. I can now control everything with the um, with a controller. Although A is back on my controller and B is forward for whatever reason. Now you just want to go back to the main menu and load your cores. Download whatever cores you want out of here. You already downloaded the database. You basically make a folder for your ROMs and you you scan all those ROMs and most people prefer to use ROM sets. After that, and once you start the game, you're going to configure it and set everything up. You're going to, you're going to set up your shader, and if you're on a phone or a tablet, you're going to set up your on-screen overlay. That's basically all you've got to do to get this to work. If you want to quit, just go to main menu and quit. Stay tuned for the next video, and I'm going to show you how to get Atari 5200 to work perfectly, because if you've ever gotten 2600 or 7800 to work, Atari 5200 is a different animal. You've got to get five BIOSes to work instead of one BIOS, and you've got to actually set this up in the Atari 5200 operating system itself. So stay tuned, and I'll see you then.